Yeah. So um, I just wanted to know, like, um, um, so how many of us, uh, you know, uh, how many of you feel that uh, you are already walking in the, you know, in the call that God has uh, for you, whether it's a evangelist or a teacher or a pastor or anything, you know, this is the fivefold ministry that we are, we looked at. So, um, so specifically, I'm just asking, you know, is, is, do you feel that you are called to the fivefold ministry? Uh, is anyone feeling that, um, uh, you know, or you you know for sure that hey, this is what I'm called to do? Anyone? You can just okay, Charles. Okay, Charles, you 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 pastor the church, do you? Um, no. Oh, okay. I don't pass the church. I'm a teacher. You you teach. Okay. So um so you teach in the uh, local church that you're part of. Um yes. Okay. And also, but also we... I yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead, Pastor. No, I, I just want to know also do you travel to other uh, like when there are invitations, do you travel and minister? Yes, I do, I do also train. Um, some the Sunday school teachers uh, to help them know how to handle the children's church. Oh, okay. So, is it primarily uh, children's ministry that um, that you teach? Yeah, my call. My call is in the children's ministry. Oh, that's and wonderful. And I'm a teacher. Wonderful. Yes, wonderful. Yeah. Uh, anyone else? Um, you know, into the fivefold. Um, like um, okay okay so so is anyone else feeling a stirring you know in the sense okay let me okay rupa look quickly put put your hand down rupa <laughs> you put your hand up uh, so you feel a stirring you know uh, that i'm not sure but this could be right uh, so I, I just want to phrase it that way you know you just feel that okay maybe you know, I have a desire, I have a stirring, you know. Um, can you put your hands up? I just wanted to see. Um, uh, Rupa, did you put your hand up? Right? Um, Sir, just to say that I'm in the five-fold ministry, that. Okay, so uh, what exactly uh, do you do? I, I know that you t teach children weekends and... Uh, um, Sir, uh, I pastor a small fellowship. Small fellowship, and, okay. And I teach in Haggai seminars. Okay. Facilitate okay. Uh, integrity, Christian integrity for leadership. And I also okay. help the student ministry, UESI. Yeah. Yeah, yeah e EU, right? Okay, wonderful. EU. Yeah, yes. Right, right. So, uh, so this is what you do full time. Okay, They're wonderful to hear that. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Pastor. Right. Okay. Um, anyone else? Any? Uh, okay. Now, uh, I just wanted to ask. You know, like uh, maybe it's evangelism. Maybe it's um, you know uh, teaching. Um, you know, how many of you get a stirring to share the gospel with whomever you meet, and you know, you're just stirring. I'm not. I'm not saying that you actually do it, but there is a you know there is a stirring, right? Every time. You meet, okay, Avni. Um, uh, okay, Rose, right? Okay. Uh, would you like to share a little bit, Rose? You, uh, I'll just come back to what you put here. Uh, so, Avni, would you like to share, like, uh, to just clarify? You know, what is it? Uh, what does this stirring uh, look um, like? Yeah. Sure, sure, Pastor. I've been uh, taking the children's church uh, for the last uh, five, six years. Yeah. And I've really enjoyed the ministry. Uh, and uh, uh, the Lord has led me in teaching the children in, in my previous church as well as uh, current church. Yeah. Okay. So okay. I've been doing that as well as also leading a small Bible study with uh, a mm. few women. Uh, so this is how Lord has led me in the past few years. Right. Wonderful. Right. Yeah. Yeah, Rose. Uh, I just uh, read out your statement here yeah, in a dream. I was getting a book from a shelf entitled How to Teach and Preach. 
uh, asking the Lord what he wants me to do for him right now, serving as life group leader and leading worship. So growing, you know, maybe. Um, right, wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Rose. That's good. Um, anyone else? Um, um, Okay, maybe I should just rephrase the question, you know. Um, okay, Nisha, uh, I have a desire towards counseling. Okay, young teens and youngsters, and I've used opportunities to speak God's word to counsel them. Wonderful, right? Okay, that's good. I was uh, uh, um, doing a youth ministry. Okay. Uh, after that, um, God uh, utilized me uh to do uh counseling courses okay. uh i am msc um uh, in special counseling uh just wow. completed uh, last year uh, okay. um, um uh, i am doing um, also the take care um, uh the uh, mini Media ministry. I'm uh, sorry, what ministry? Media. Media, okay, right. Um, I am uh, good at um, photography, uh, mm. mixing. Uh, I learned um, media is uh, my um, choice. Uh, mm. I night on uh, uh, right toward um, uh, God uh, is. Uh, Place me and um, uh, given me the vision, mm. uh, my, like uh, uh, I can't uh, do, um, um, uh, uh, I want to uh, media uh, uh, along with uh, me in um, ministry. Mm -hmm. uh, the yeah, addition holders, uh, addition, duck addition, dunk and addition. Uh, oh. mm, that's my um, uh, right. uh, right. Thank you, Dinesh. Thank you so much. Wonderful. Yeah. Um, anyone else? What, what do you get stirred about you know uh, it could be to share the gospel okay do you get a stirring that i need to take care of people you know um anyone feels that way uh, i i want them to do well i want to take care of them uh you know you might see them in need you know different kinds of needs but then there is this uh, stirring to take care you know uh, you see people hurting you want them um to be healed and uh, you know thriving um anyone feel that way okay prabhakar yes yeah rupa okay okay yeah sam to work among believers especially adolescents to mentor and guide them to be world changers so uh, I feel deeply moved, disturbed when I hear about um, young Christians getting into trouble. Wonderful. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, just keep that, you know, sensitivity alive. Uh, yeah. That compassion alive. Yeah. Okay. Feel for the people who've lost loved ones, counseling them and ministering to them. Okay. Right. You know, this stirring, you know, we, yeah, yeah, we, we may not really, you know, uh, put a label and say pastoral, right? but but really it, you see that it's part of a pastoral call, right? To uh, you know all those people who said you know I feel this compassion, I feel the stirring, I feel this um, you know whenever you see hurting people or in difficulty and you want to help them, right? Um, it is uh, you know it could be in let's say uh, it could be in a in a corporate setup, right? Uh, you could be working in a company, you could be, uh, you know, uh, serving in government, but, but there is this, uh, there is this stirring desire to, uh, to lead them, 
from where they are to where they should be. There is a stirring to help them. Uh, you know that they can do better, and you know you just reach in and and you do that. You know that's that's part of uh, you know that's part of a uh, a shepherding uh, call, right? So and it it need not be like um, uh, a full time uh, capacity, it, or it need not be as a fivefold even. Right, but you see that is a uh, you know that, that's a shepherd's heart, and uh, and and the thing is to, um, yeah, the thing is to just go, and uh, I just want to affirm that, right? First of all, that uh, to say that you may not really look at it as a shepherd's um, uh, and, and as one of those characteristics, but you see that a shepherd does that, and that's really God's heart for people, and so you know, do you have that? So it's wonderful. Um, continue to do what you're doing. Right. And those of you who said, you know, like Charles and Rupa, you know, you are already walking in the middle of it and, and walking in it and in so many different avenues, you're serving God, you know, just continue to be strong and um, may the Lord lead you, you know, into doing uh, great and wonderful things for his glory. Right. Um, others wouldn't ra raise your hands. I'm sure that you're, you know, you, you I don't know what you guys are doing right now. Maybe you're listening, and uh, uh, but definitely, I'm sure you know there is a, a stirring uh, when you see. Uh, maybe maybe you want to share the gospel. You want people to know the truth. Uh, maybe you want to help people. Uh, and some of you, I'm sure, you know, you have this desire to teach. Right? It's, these are things that you've learned, and you maybe you want to show them how things work. And for you. It's um, you know you you are not satisfied with uh, um, you you're not satisfied with knowing you know okay this is how this is what this does or this is what this gadget does okay I, I use this gadget to get this result but you really want to know how does it work right how how does this work uh, you want to get into the details of it right you want to get into um, the nitty gritties of it and uh, you know anybody like that. That you're always asking these questions, you know, how, why, where, when, anyone? Okay, Rose, anyone else? Um, you know, you, 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 you want to know how things work. Right? Anyone else? Okay, say, okay. Yeah, Sri Kumar, Anita, Avni. Yeah. So, you know, and also uh, maybe you're not just satisfied, but you want to share it. Yeah, Chris. Yeah. So you want to share it, you know, uh, you want to share it. This is, you know, what I learned this, you know, this is what it is. Uh, this is how, you know, this is how it works. Right? And, uh, and you have that compassion to show that to people, to teach people. Okay, th th this is how things work. And and you do do that in the natural, you know, you know what um, this is what the government is offering. This is the scheme. This is how it works, and you get into the details of it, and you want to help people with it, right? Now you may not, um, yeah, Sri Kumar. Um, now you may not, um, Sri Kumar. You have a question. Um, you put your hand up. No, Pastor. No, thank you. No. Okay. Okay. So now you may not look at it as, a, you know, you have an inquiring mind, but you may not look at it as a, as a teaching call right you, but the fact is that you know that's that stirring okay? so that is one way in which it manifests right you have an inquiring mind you want to get to the uh, depths of it i'm not saying that you are called to be a teacher but then you know the this is how it uh, manifests right there is there is this drawing in you there to to want to know more Right. You're not satisfied at the superficial level, but you want to get into the depths, depths of it, and you want to know more. And you're not satisfied with knowing, just knowing, uh, you know. But you want to share it as well, and right? you want to sh uh, share it with people, and uh, you know, just continue to grow in that. Right? Continue to grow in that, um, and uh, who knows, right? Who knows that uh, as you walk in it, as you are faithful as you are helping people, the Lord will, this is how it works. The Lord opens avenues, right? The Lord 
um, uh, expands your sphere of influence. And I'm sure, you know, uh, if we ask Rupa or if we ask Charles, right, who are doing that, you know, they will tell you that they started by working on this. They had this desire. They they were just faithful to it, right? They they in where, wherever God placed them, they they just helped people. They pointed people to Christ. They pointed people to Scripture and the truth of Scripture, and God. Uh, continue to you know increase their sphere of influence right uh, and um, and one day they started walking in the fullness of that call and God used them in different ways even as he um, as people you know in in Rupa's case equipping people in leadership and so on and and in Charles case both ministering to children and also equipping others who minister to children so um, so you will see that um, you know uh, God increases the sphere of influence and also um, you know gives avenues uh, to share so, so it starts this way it starts with the desire it starts with the stirring um, but say yes to the Lord right? say yes to Lord uh, to the Lord and be faithful in uh, in whatever he has committed be faithful in walking in it. Right. Um, so it's wonderful to hear uh, all that's happening. Um, right. Okay. Uh, let's let's move on. Yes, Chris. Yeah. Oh yes, Pastor. I just wanted to um, to understand the uh, uh, you know for the uh, EPC Church. Uh, yeah. Uh, how do how would this sort of specific focus on um, the apostolic apostolic and uh, evangelization uh, uh, ministry um, mm. is there is there, is there a uh, I mean is it kind of a you know a generalized approach or is it is it like really really focused kind of uh, approach uh, so just wanted to understand that uh, to provide a more detail on that uh, so the uh, the apostolic uh, which uh, and the uh, and evangelism and uh, right right so of course there is more information on the apostolic um, other aspects of the apostolic uh, when we do the course uh, uh, apostolic ministry um, but uh, well the apostolic uh, one is uh, is really a pioneering work it's open opening up new territories right we know that and so um, as a church intentionally uh, so that is what uh, always uh, you know has been the uh, uh, I, I've right from what I've seen right uh, through the years that um, uh, some pioneering work in in youth ministry, pioneering work in in media, um, and pioneering work in like uh, even in uh, ministry of uh, teaching to the leaders and so on. Like um, so, um, so in in areas in places uh, where from it's it was not done. Uh, and uh, and also, like for example, we had these short-term Bible colleges. Uh, I'm sure other ministries do it also, but uh, the, like this was done in uh, with a tie-up with uh, a hospital in a certain place, and then you know all the pastors, all the uh, you know pastors of that region, where then we we realized that there was nothing actually done. You know, um, so things like that. So there is um, so there is the apostolic grace and anointing. Um, uh, you know, which um, which you know manifests in these manners. So you see that uh, happening. Um, you know, not not really uh, being afraid of uh, doing because that's not how it's done. You know, that is uh, that is one way. Uh, I would say the apostolic. Uh, when it comes to evangelism, uh, yeah, it's um, uh, see the thing is one one way it it happens is uh, in terms of um, equipping people uh, to do the work of evangelism, right? Equipping people to do the work of evangelism. So it happens in a man in in a manner like where people are taught um, uh, both when when we have. Uh, uh, Sunday uh, ministry time, our Sunday services uh, and Sunday sermons, and also the you know what we have as the weekend schools and so so um, have those um, you know on evangelism, on ways to reach out and 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 the prophetic and and that also um, and really encouraging uh, life groups to do that uh, so that it's it becomes part of our lifestyle and not an event. Right. It's just part of our life and not a event by itself. Um, so, so these are 
uh, some ways we do it. And also, I think one of the thing is uh, the Bible College has been uh, really been a blessing, um, where uh, we're able to uh, share uh, the vision, share um, uh, what God, uh, you know, sh share uh, from the Word to people different places where they can do the same. Uh, over there as well so that has also been one avenue so um yeah so that's uh, that's how it has been so, yeah uh, have you done much uh we has apc uh church that have done much evangelization uh, evangelization outside of india uh we used to have um one in peru um there was one uh, and of course, Nepal. Um, where else? I think the, uh, like uh, before, this was early days where I used to serve as a volunteer. So I'm just trying to recollect. Um, there was some work which was done before I came in in Afghanistan. Uh, there was a mission trip, uh, Sri Lanka. Um, uh, again, Peru. Of course, for some time there was actually a local church there, and then the pastor family moved from there to uh, to the US. So um, that work uh, did not really continue. Um, yeah, so Nepal also, uh, we had a work. Um, yeah, so these were some, some countries that I can think of. Uh, Nepal, Sri Lanka, um, Peru, uh, Afghanistan, there was a missions work. I think that a couple of uh, visits happened. Um, so I don't know the details of that, but I know that, you know, these were some ways, um, or some of these nations, we, um, did some kind of work, um, there. And I think Sri Lanka, it was, uh, actually during the time when there was a tsunami and, uh, so it, it, uh, it was some relief work. It was, a uh, I think it was more of an investigative, uh, work, um, towards bringing in relief, um, uh, there. So, yeah. I, I'm sorry, I wasn't on staff then. I wasn't, uh, so I I don't have too many details of that. But um, yeah, yeah, yes, uh, Prabhaka. Pastor, uh, how do we know this is a stirring of a prophetic call? Please. How do we know if there is a stirring for the prophetic? prophetic is it? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so um, so we know that uh, you know the, when we study the prophetic, we saw we see that uh, you know there is the prophesying believer, right? Uh, like uh, like all believers definitely have the um, I know we're kind of digressing a bit, but yeah, all believers have the privilege and the opportunity to hear the voice of God and to you know to um, obey and to do the things like right? to speak it out and to do it uh, as God wanted. Uh, to be done so uh, all of us you know are we have the privilege of doing that then we have uh, you know as believers uh, we uh, you know there are there are there are certain you know we are placed in the body of christ uh, those of us as believers and we have some membership gifts in the sense as a member of the body of christ uh, this is how i help another member or this is how i bring strength uh, to another member even as i receive strength so consistently i you know sh i do that right i sh uh, walk in that in the prophetic then of course the ministry uh, office or the ministry gift of the prophetic where it is my life's call and that is how i uh, you know I, god wants me to function and it it involves a, a prophetic mantle and of course a geographical uh, territory and so on the sphere of influence is quite past um, uh, uh, scope of ministry is quite far or quite um, you know we uh, quite vast uh, and uh, maybe God is taking the uh, you know person as a prophet to prophesy to nations uh, prophet prophesy um, or encourage uh, um, heads of state and you know heads of corporations and so on so um, so that that is uh, something you know we see as a ministry uh, office or ministry gift of the uh, prophet um, now in in simple terms you know the stirring is um, always to um, to hear the voice of God and God we know that God speaks in different ways um, you know as a prompting or as a you know as a quickening of the word and uh, and so um, so you have this compulsion you you meet with people and you're talking to them and uh, uh, and maybe uh, you have this word for them you just sense that 
god loves them so much you know it's as a simple as that as general and vague as that you know god loves them but then you feel that in your heart you know and you want to tell them that or it could be uh, a specific word of knowledge you know there is a knowing that this person or you know it could be something visual that you see it could be something that you hear auditorily or you something of you know you get a scripture verse we can etc you know for that person and uh, and uh, and the best thing to do is to test it out right test it out and initially we might make mistakes or we might be you know kind of fearful etc but then to go test it out um uh, as long as it's you know and not contradicting the word and so on just you know try it on what would it you know uh, d- that's does this make sense right and so maybe there are dreams you know you get some dreams and um, you start jotting these down and uh, and, say, and ask the lord lord what is interpretation uh, what would you uh, what is it what is the meaning of this it seems to be very symbolic etc or it could be a literal dream right and you see that scenario playing out the next day or maybe a week from then then you know that yeah uh, you know god is communicating something so you make start making note of that and asking god you know spending time in prayer um so these would be some ways by which you know practically um you feel you you sense that god is calling you to function in the prophetic okay now this is for all believers right now this what i've shared is for all believers uh, so any believer can start to do that um because we are called to desire the spiritual gifts one of which is prophecy right so we do that uh, and um well god would just you know as you begin to function that maybe you know god has that in store for you to be a prophet to be a spokesperson um to function in the prophetic uh, and he would say okay come i want you to do this right um so yeah so that's that's how it uh, it happens uh does it help prabhaka yes master yes very much thank you pastor. yeah okay 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 so um so evangelist evangelist uh the teacher the the pastor okay um now you know the the love of god uh interconnects everything the love for people uh, intersects everything you know um the love for the word of god intersects everything um and love for uh, you know more of god and hunger for more of god intersects everything right so it's it these are common things which are there but um you know personally you might feel as like somebody some, some of some of you shared um when it comes to you know people who are already born again and now that's how primarily it works um you know you, that's how primarily god is using you uh you know to minister to those who are in the body right and uh, and that does not mean that you don't have a passion for you know reaching out but uh, primarily these are the opportunities and this is where you're seeing the most fruit um you know uh, that's the stirring that you're having so um well pursue that right pursue that uh, and uh, uh yeah so when it comes to um, so just identify this you know and and i'm sure that all of you uh, you know have these uh have these opportunities have these stirrings and maybe sometimes you just shut it down saying okay you know i got too much things to do i i got work to do i got stuff to do uh, i got responsibilities i can't you know uh, maybe maybe we just uh, shut it down right uh but i just want to encourage us to you know to pursue right uh despite it not being comfortable to pursue it and say okay god um what is it that you want me to do and and i'd be faithful to that right uh, so please don't look at ministry as um, as a event you know uh, as a something that happens on stage um, as something that um, you know it, irrespective of what your environment is you know you could be doing things online you could be doing things offline you could be in you know wherever right uh, that is that is where ministry happens it's it's uh, so begin to look at it that way you know um, i think uh, traditional christianity is um, you know has that kind of a view where we say okay church and on stage and this is where 
uh, ministry there is a place there is a place for us to gather uh, you know at gather church of god and local church very important i think uh, you know you've been learning about that there is a place for that but that is not all we need to understand that that that's where you probably spend 2 hours 2 and a half hours 3 hours of your week and the rest of the time is in community uh, maybe you know where you are with family um, you know and that is where ministry uh, happens and all these stirrings and all these desires that uh, you you know god puts in your heart or you have it right um, you want to do something um, well pursue that right um, and and pursue that with god pray through that you know, take it to god and say lord i have this desire i want to do something but um i don't know i i seem to be lacking faith or i seem to be um you know not having the strength or uh, i don't know somehow, somehow i back off uh, I, all these regrets and everything come and uh, and you know, i'm just all these voice of unbelief that i'm not good enough or all that you know just work on that you know, get your identity in place saying okay this is who i am and you know pray uh, uh along the lines of what god is putting in your heart um and uh, you will see a great work develop you know you will see a great work develop and you see your life uh, being changed you know i i never I dreamt that i'll be pastoring or doing what i'm doing right now it was it was just a desire i felt the most I, I felt complete when I was doing that, you know, when I was leading worship or, you know, sharing the word with someone. And uh, I felt, uh, you know, really at home doing that. And, uh, well, but God had plans. God had to weed out a lot of things uh, in before commissioning. And God did it in, in amazing supernatural ways. But I had to pursue that, you know, continue doing that. Uh, when I was, you know, uh, when I was in sales, when I was handling corporate sales for all those years. And it was, those are difficult years because you have, you know, only X amount of time. And, uh, but, um, you know, you continue to be faithful in the little things. And then you see things opening up, things falling off, right? And, uh, and God preparing your heart uh, for what he wants done. And the most important thing is this, you know, for me, it was coming out of, the corporate environment and i'm sure that you know some of you like like tarun is there in very much there in a corporate kind of environment and uh, and uh, i don't know who else maybe you're working um, you know um, maybe god wants you to do something there right and that can be really powerful uh, and it can be uh, you know teaching something on leadership like what rupa is doing and teaching something on management and you're really bringing the heart and mind of god in in that you know, uh, and which um, which is not there in any other uh, in any other stream. You know, uh, and but God has placed you there to be that voice of integrity and uh, and uh, you know that bringing in that ethics and so on. So it's so so powerful. And um, no full time so called full time pastor or evangelist has access to that. But you are there, right there, right? Uh, meeting people every day uh, and. Uh, and that's a wonderful opportunity. It's it's not the most easiest of places, right? In the sense, it's uh, you don't have a ready and willing audience to sit and listen. You know, um, maybe it happens as a casual conversation. Um, maybe it happens, uh, you know, during a time of uh, uh, teaching. You know, teaching pe people some skills, and people get to encounter the the heart and mind of God, you know, through you. Right? and get to know, okay, this is why, this is the basis of this person's life. You know, this is why this person lives life this way. And uh, and you are that uh, that instrument, uh, you know, leading them to Christ, uh, leading them to en encounter the power of God, right? Um, yeah, so, um, oh, I think we started somewhere and went somewhere else. <laughs> Okay, but uh, but uh, I just wanted to encourage us to continue on. Okay, don't look at uh, the fivefold as uh, well. God will call. God will call some of us into that, uh, but don't um, neglect these small stirrings, promptings. Okay, um, because walking in the fullness of the of the call, uh, it starts here. You know, it starts with. 
um, us being faithful to the promptings and the stirrings and the leadings and the guidings and the and the divine opportunities and 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 what seems like coincidence you know you're traveling with someone you're meeting with someone and you're uh, you know uh, you're ministering to that person what seems like um, like a coincidence or a casual conversation you know ministry happens there you know don't neglect that right okay okay let's let's continue with the with the notes um we're on page 28 just to rem remind you um we looked at uh, point number four uh, of the you know, you know key, practical keys to doing ministry overseeing the teaching and preaching of god's word okay the importance of that um and not really you know leave it for another person and say you know uh, not really involved in it uh, but really have to have a plan like to have a vision for that as well to say okay as a congregation as a church this is one this is what we want to grow into okay uh, to get that blueprint from god you know i know this is where the congregation is right maybe you 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 know where uh, where you are people are people are all new believers okay it's the first generation which has come to know christ it's a you know it's a wonderful opportunity so they need to grow uh, in the word they need to grow in um in their spiritual disciplines and so on so um, you, so you have a plan for that right so you have a vision for that and say okay this year uh, as a congregation we need to grow we need to grow in instilling uh, everyone in the word in worship in prayer so that they grow up to be strong ministers or strong leaders but the, first of all they need to be strong believers now you know um, they might have questions so we might have to do some um, you know something on that you know how to live as a practical uh, practical life as a believer uh, what are some of those issues and and so on and also look at why do we believe what we believe and and things like that like right? some of those um, so you don't disconnect um, just because you have people to look after that you know maybe it's not you preaching teaching every sunday but maybe someone else but don't disconnect um, uh, you know you oversee that aspect you shepherd that aspect steward that aspect uh, what is uh, the church receiving what should be um, ministered from the word to the church you know you oversee that right okay uh, then some other uh, things is to be the steward responsible for the administration of the sacrament so we're looking at uh, uh, the communion the lord's table um, now um, you know it is possible that uh, you again you may not be there every time to do it but then you uh, be the steward responsible meaning that you assign uh, who should do it you know, it should not be uh, something some random thing happening um, maybe uh, you know someone whom you pick and choose uh, to be an elder or someone who is uh, uh, you know uh, who's a associate someone whatever you know but uh, and if you're there you administer the sacraments lead people in um, in in that powerful declar declaration of the death burial and resurrection of christ right so you minister to people that way okay uh, in all things strive to maintain the unity of the spirit uh, so by, by example through the way you live and you minister you know put an end to all division strife uh, now, in the sense, uh, uh, be very aggressive about uh, you know uh, about not allowing these things to to uh, to grow and to fester. Right? Uh, maybe uh, so. What are those things that cause you know, like we see in one Corinthians, we see uh, uh, you know people exalting lead other leaders and uh, beyond their place of honor. And thereby forming divisions where people are saying, "I support, I you know, I prefer this person, I prefer that person," and there's division, right? Uh, maybe there's uh, you know selfish ambition, uh, maybe there's pride, maybe there's gossip, um, all creating strife and division, right? So maintain the unity uh, that is brought about by the Holy Spirit. Maintain the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. Now that is something that we see as the ministry of the fivefold right um 
Let's just turn to Ephesians 4 and verse 11. Ephesians 4. Um, okay, uh, uh, okay, verse 12. From For the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry. Now this is what the fivefold does. For the edifying of the body of Christ. Verse 13. Till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness, that we should be no longer be children tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men, in the cunning craftiness of deceitful uh, plotting, but speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head, uh, and from whom the whole body joined and knit together, by what every joint supplies according to the effective sharing by which every part does its share causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. So you see, uh, you know, till we come to the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the son of God. And, um, and we see that the whole body is knit together, joined together, growing together. And there's a edifying building up of itself in love. Okay, so um, so as the fivefold to really take care of that of the, the unity that is brought about by the Holy Spirit in the bond of peace, right? Um, so as a as a pastor, more as a pastor, you know that is because um, you know taking care of the people, giving spiritual leadership to the people, interacting with people, uh, raising up leaders, and so on. So by example and by precept. Know, in principle, uh, precept and by example, to ensure that um, there is the unity, okay, um, and not seek to, uh, you know, exalt oneself and uh, not uh, bring in any kind of, uh, you know, if there's a dissonance, if there's a disconnect between our teaching and the life we lead, then obviously, you know, we are setting the wrong example, the message is not clear, and all kinds of things come in. Right. We're opening the door uh, for all kinds of things to come in and, and uh, yeah, you know, for the enemy to really uh, bring in confusion. Right. So uh, in all things, try to do that. OK. Establish ministries that seek to ensure that every member and member is cared for. OK. I think that we looked at. Um, so if there are no ministries, uh, take care of a believer in a particular way, uh, uh, you know, to establish that. Um, to see if if there are people who can actually move in those gifts and take care, otherwise to it would be to refer you know to others you know till such time that there are people who are who can actually uh, move in and uh, take care of people in that manner. Okay. Raising up leaders is uh, again um, an important role of the pastor. Raising up leaders, um, raising up people in the congregation, uh, equipping them and, uh, you know, uh, and, and also encouraging them in the growth to be leaders, right? So um, it is, it, it's, um, it, it's, it starts by uh, teaching and, um, uh, and ensuring that people discover their call. Okay? It's, it starts there, right? So, um, so, so we see that uh, it's uh, it's really not about just uh, you know sharing something from the word and and uh, you know it's it's not about a message which is shared on Sunday. It's it's really about uh, grooming people and per uh, and presenting every person perfect in Christ, the mature in Christ. You know, and it starts from um, you know, ministering and uh, allowing people to discover what their call is, identify, discover what their call is. Right? And, um, and once people uh, discover that and their place in the body of Christ, and then there's no stopping really, you know, because they're on the path to grow, to mature. Uh, yes, there will, there will be challenges, etc. but then they're on that path, you know, because they know, okay, this is what God has called me, or this is, what, this, this is the direction God is pointing me, right? So to, to raise up leaders, to present every person perfect in Christ, to mature people into leadership. Now, um, 
you know, we see that when Paul uh, in Galatians, where when Paul uh, visits uh, the disciples, right? This is um, uh, Galatians chapter two says, then after 14 years, I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas and also took Titus with me. And he goes to meet, uh, in verse 2, he says, uh, you know, that I might, uh, I went up by revelation and communicated to them the gospel which I preach among the Gentiles, but privately to those who were of reputation, lest by any means I might run or have had run in vain. Okay, So that was his objective. He's going to meet the disciples. And then he's, he, verse 9, um, he refers to you know James, Peter, and John, and he says, you know, when James, Cephas, and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that had been given to me, they gave me and Barnabas the right hand of fellowship that we should go to the Gentiles and they to the circumcised. So he's saying, you know, they seem to be pillars, right, in the in the church. They were pillars, uh, meaning they were wearing, they were taking those responsibilities and they seemed to be pillars. They were leaders who were carrying the weight of responsibility of the, you know, uh, or sharing the weight of resp responsibility of the, of the ministry, right? Um, we also know that uh, the church is referred to as the pillar and the ground of truth, right? Um, uh, and uh, Paul, uh, Paul talks about that pillar and the ground of truth, um, uh, referring to the church as uh, you know the, the structure that holds truth. Now, for that, we need pillars in the structure, and leaders are pillars in in the in the house of God, right? So, to raise up leaders, um, uh, people who can uh, carry the load, people who can minister to others, people who can you know that is what we see. That is the example, the scriptural example that we see as well that Paul had this team, had this ministry team who were leaders, who were with him, who saw him, who were taught by him, uh, who traveled with him, uh, ministered with him, and we see them taking leadership positions like Timothy and Titus and, and so on, right? Um, so raise up God's people into leadership. So in doing so, we will actually be helping them fulfill God's vision for their lives, right? Um, so, and that is the most satisfying thing, right? To to help people discover God's call, God's vision for them, and to to enable them to to do that. Now, it could be in the house of God, it could be in the church where you are, um, or it could be elsewhere. But either way, it's fine, right? Because but you are facilitating, you are helping them, ministering to them, and helping them realize God's call for them, right? Uh, God's vision for them. And and that's the primary thing. So it it need not always be in the in the church where you are leading. Right? It could be elsewhere also. Um, um, and if it is so, then that's fine. Right. So it is uh, it is the kingdom of God. Right. Okay. So raising up leaders um, quickly. Uh, let's look at um, the other thing is to supervise the staff of the congregation. So maybe the church is big. There are other uh, staff. The church the ministry has grown. There are other staff taking care of other functions, um, the functions, responsibilities in the ministry. Uh, maybe there are deacons. Maybe there are you know full time staff, right? And um, so uh, the thing is to uh, make sure that the work that they do and the, and the role and the way, the manner in which it is done is aligned to the vision, right? Vision of the ministry, vision of the church. Um, now, uh, so it would help if that is communicated while hiring. It would help if it is communicated while orienting the people, right? Um, or, um, you know, you so, and also in, in placing them in their responsibilities. So to have people, uh, to who steward that to to manage uh, other all these functions for them to have clarity about uh, you know this is the vision and therefore you know the manner in which we do our work needs to align with that and not uh, you know not go against that right like for example if uh, let's say you know the, this is the god given vision and you are pursuing that and you have values like integrity and and, and so on and then you know in the accounting function 
let's say accounts department whoever is part of that these are support staff and an important role and function that they carry out so whoever is part of that uh, also needs to understand the vision also needs to understand the culture and the values of the church and be aligned to that right and be totally aligned to that and otherwise there will be unnecessary uh, chaos uh, in the accounting function right uh, whereas where transparency or integrity is compromised then you know then it starts you know it is not the done thing you know that first of all jesus is not uh, glorified and it's against the goes against the vision of the ministry right okay so we'll stop here and uh, and look at the uh, the next three uh, in, in next class and also uh, maybe if we will look at the lives of some maybe just three people you know like you know, an evangelist and a teacher and a pastor and uh, look at their life and ministry um and uh, yeah and and that will be uh, will be good so uh, once we finish that i'm just thinking maybe we should um, yeah let me just uh, stop the recording here um sorry